Emil from Less EMF. This short video is about shielding small magnets with magnetic shielding materials. Magnets produce strong DC magnetic fields which can vary widely from a few hundred gauss to many thousands of gauss. The strength of the magnet's field decreases rapidly with distance and varies both in polarity and strength depending on the position relative to the magnet. It is possible to shield a magnetic field from a magnet, that is, to reduce the field strength or alter the shape of the field. However, it is not possible to create a, mono a monopole. A magnetic field is easy to measure. A DC gauss meter with external probe can report the strength and orientation of the magnet's field at any location. Here are some examples of magnetic shielding materials. Notice that they are all solid metals. All of them are attracted to a magnet. There's no exceptions. There are no fabrics, paints, or powders which can effectively shield DC magnetic fields. A good magnetic shield will have a high magnetic permeability and a high saturation. There are only a few materials which have both of these qualities. Thickness, shape, size, and position of the shield also play important roles in shielding effectiveness. Thickness also affects your ability to cut and shape the material. This first material here is called gyron. This one here is magnet shield. This one with the white paper on it is called paper shield. And this last one is mu metal. Now let's see how each of these magnetic shielding materials performs. We have an unshielded neodymium magnet which I have glued to the tabletop. On its surface, it has a maximum field strength of about 1,680 gauss. This probe from a magnetic field meter, at this distance, the magnetic field is about 778 gauss, as you can see on the meter display. First, let's test the gyron. This small piece of gyron, we're going to put it on the magnet. Notice that the material is quite thick and heavy. When we put this on the magnet, the field drops to about 273 gauss. When we add a second layer, the field drops further to essentially zero. So the gyron is a very effective shielding material. Remember that the size of the shield will have a major effect on the performance. Now let's do the same experiment with magnet shield. I'm going to start with a small piece, one small piece drops the field to 665 gauss, adding a second layer takes us to 570 gauss. Now if instead I use a larger piece, same material, same thickness, just a larger format, the one layer drops us to 505 with a second layer of magnet shield, drops us to 306. The third material I want to show is called paper shield. It's extremely thin and its permeability is not as high as gyron or magnet shield. You'll notice there's a peel off layer on one side that reveals the adhesive and a paper side that can be printed on on the other. Here I have six thicknesses of paper shield. If I insert all six layers, we can see that it drops the field reading down to about 390. If I use the larger pieces, I put first one piece, 707, 640, 580, 520, 450, and now 395. So with six pieces, six layers, we can drop it down to 395. Notice that with this material, each layer gives a slight improvement in shielding performance, so you can very precisely adjust the amount of attenuation that you'd like to achieve. Finally, I'd like to show you the effect of mu metal. Mu metal has a very high permeability, but a fairly low saturation level, which means it's not appropriate for shielding strong magnetic fields. When I set one layer in, you see a small reduction to 720. When I put a second layer in, we, we go down to 680. This is because the material is saturating, meaning it cannot absorb any more of the magnetic field. And so even though it would be quite effective for a weak magnetic field, it's not very effective for a strong field.
In summary, there are several completely different alloys which can be used to shield magnetic fields. Each has certain advantages and disadvantages. It's important to decide what amount of attenuation your project requires and how much space is available for the shield. It is easy to measure the shielding effect with a DC gauss meter and adjust the size and number of layers of the shielding material to meet your needs.